how can companies transition to a cloud native data and real time analytics environment? And what are the best practices? And what technology developments should you keep an eye on in the coming months? Matt Macau is the global field CTO, Esmeral Software at HP, and is here to talk us through all the steps to modernize and to future proof your data and analytics environment. Welcome, Matt. Thanks for having me. I appreciate being here. You're welcome. So in our recent conversation, we discussed the transformation for enterprises to cloud native data and real-time analytics environments. So what are typical steps organizations need to make to accomplish this transformation? It's, it's not trivial. I'll start out with that. It's, it's not a simple process because as we talked about, these existing data intensive applications and environments, enterprise data, warehouses, data lakes, uh, traditional databases, even more modern uh, databases, don't tend to work well in those cloud native environments. All that data is heavy. It's said to have gravity. But I need to be able to exploit it. I need to be able to do next generation analytics on it. And so the, the trick again, as we talked about before, is separate compute from storage. That's a really important first step. Because by doing that, we can now think about modernizing the applications that sit on top of that. That's usually the first step, is take those applications and run them in containers and then connect to those databases. But what that generally means is I'm gonna have to do that either on premises in my data center or in a co-location. As we look to move those to cloud locations, again, if we've done that separated compute and storage and put those applications in containers, maybe even modernize them using microservices, it's going to be a lot easier than to do the data migration that follows. So I would say that's probably the first step is taking those cloud principles that we talked about before and applying them to those estates. And uh, just one more thing I'll say on this topic is, not every application and platform is going to be well suited for this, which means we're probably going to have to adopt new technologies. Yeah, and if we have to adopt these new technologies, this is probably a process. Can you give some yeah, real life examples of companies, how they start the journey and how they successfully migrated to the cloud to this um, cloud native real time data analytics environment? Uh, yeah, so I, I, I've got a couple of examples that I, I always have in mind when I talk about this. It's organizations that have gone to some of those, uh, they've gone from some of those traditional proprietary platforms and moved to something new, but they realized that they didn't like the lock-in that they had with those proprietary platforms. Yeah, they were perhaps best-in-class data warehouses or data lakes, but they were really stuck in that ecosystem. So a lot of the organizations I speak to now, what I've seen the most successful is adopting an open source first approach. If we're going to modernize and if we're going to upgrade or migrate our platforms, organizations are looking for two key things. The, the first is they're looking for platforms that are based on as much open source software as possible, because that means you're not going to be locked in. That means I can move from one platform to another. And then the second is they're looking for technology partners that integrate and want to cooperate with other technology partners. Rather than going with those full stack solutions, they're looking for not necessarily a best of breed approach, but a best of collaboration approach. And again, if you're based on open source and it's loosely coupled with lots of these components that work well together, that gives you the flexibility, the portability, the scalability to be able to run those workloads in a cloud native manner, whether it's again, in your data centers or in public cloud instances. And I really like you address this um, ecosystem, this partner approach, because in the end it's an ecosystem with partners to, to accomplish this. And as, as last point, everybody always wants to know what's next. You are a leader in this domain who works already on the next big thing. Can you share what we can expect the coming time? In the data intensive space where this digital transformation is occurring, I'm seeing a couple of key trends. I'm seeing massive adoption of Kubernetes. All of these platforms need to run on Kubernetes, but a lot of these vendors are struggling to actually modernize their platforms to do that. And then secondly, we have seen Apache Spark as the execution framework that most platforms are starting to leverage. And so where I think the next, next set of trends are going to be for digital transformation of data intensive workloads is as those platforms and applications need runtimes that deploy open source Kubernetes and open source Apache Spark, as well as other ecosystem tools to run on. You can sort of think of that as a, a runtime or even an operating system for data intensive workloads. And I see organizations looking to solve for that 
and then be able to then create the logic that's going to help transform their organizations. Spot on trends and definitely need to keep an eye on this. Thank you, Matt. Some great insights, how to transform to a cloud-based real-time data analytics platform. Thank you. And for the audience, thank you for watching and looking forward to seeing you next time. Thank you very much.